After finding a general formula for the inverse of an invertible matrix, we were able to prove Kramer's rule. Link in the description. Today, we'll get a bit more hands-on with Kramer's rule, make sure we understand it, by using it to solve a couple of systems of equations. We'll do a 2x2 two two example and a 3x3 three three example. Kramer's rule says, if ax equals b is a system of n linear equations in n unknowns, such that the determinant of a, the coefficient matrix, is non-zero, then the system has this unique solution, where each a, j, is the matrix obtained by replacing the jth column of a with the column of constants from the right side of the equation. This is a pretty straightforward solution to write out, but if you know anything about evaluating determinants, this is not efficient. This is not fun to do, and generally Gauss-Jordan elimination will be a lot more efficient. In order to solve a system using Kramer's rule, we will have to evaluate n plus 1 determinants, the determinant of a, which appears in each term, and then the n determinants of the matrices a1 through a n. Let's go ahead and try it out ourselves. Let's solve this system of two equations and two unknowns, if possible, using Kramer's rule. Here are the relevant matrices. A, the coefficient matrix, then A1, which is the coefficient matrix, but with the first column replaced by the constants on the right side of the equation, and then A2, which again is A, but with the second column replaced by the constants from the right side of the equation. We need to find the determinants of all three of these matrices. Thankfully, they're two by two, so that's pretty easy. The determinant of A will be seven minus negative six, so seven plus six, so 13. The determinant of A1 is three minus negative two, so three plus two, so five. The determinant of A2 will be seven minus nine, so negative two. Now that we have all the determinants, we can write out the solution. Here is the solution. The value of x1 is the determinant of a1 divided by the determinant of a, so 5 over 13. The value for x2 is the determinant of a2 divided by the determinant of a, so negative 2 over 13. Geometrically, what we've just done is use Kramer's rule to find the point of intersection of the two lines. Right there, that is the point 5 thirteenths, negative 2 thirteenths. In this next example, again, we're asked to solve the system, if possible, using Kramer's rule. We have two equations and two unknowns. This one is not possible. We would start by finding the determinant of A, the coefficient matrix, and we find the determinant of A is zero. Four times three is 12, minus 12 is zero. Hence, all of the solutions we could try to calculate would have zeros in the denominator. There is not a solution to this system of linear equations. If we were to graph the two lines, we would find that they are parallel. They do not intersect. And so it's no surprise the determinant of the coefficient matrix is zero. All right, let's bite the bullet and do a three by three example. We're going to solve this system using Kramer's rule, three equations, three variables beginning with the coefficient matrix A. We need to find the determinant of A, which is written here, the determinant of this three by three matrix. Well, we can perform some row operations in order to find this determinant. Link in the description to my lesson introducing how to find determinants using row operations. What we'll do is get zeros below this leading one. So we'll subtract four times row one from row two, and we will subtract two times row one from row three. That gets us here, and as we know, adding multiples of one row, or column, to another does not change the determinant. So the determinant of this is the same as the determinant of this. But now we can perform a pretty easy cofactor expansion along the first column. Link in the description to my lesson on cofactor expansion. All we do is take this first entry, that's one, and then multiply by the determinant of the submatrix that remains when we delete the row and column of one. So that's the determinant of that. We see that there. That's just a two by two matrix, so that's easy to calculate. We've got that entry one multiplied by this determinant, and that determinant is just going to be 15 times negative five minus 10 times negative two. And so this evaluates to negative 75 plus 20, which is negative 55. That's the determinant of the coefficient matrix. So a solution does exist because this is not 
equal to zero. All right, moving on to the matrix A1. This is the coefficient matrix, but with the first column replaced by the constants from the right side of the system of equations. We'll need to find the determinant of this matrix. You could do that using the handy dandy diagonal trick, link in the description to my lesson on that trick, but let's just go ahead and do this with row reduction. The easiest option looks like introducing zeros above and below row two. So what we'll do is add six times row two to row one, and subtract 20 times row two from row three. That gets us here, and as we know, adding multiples of a row to another does not change the determinant. So the determinant we're looking for is equal to this determinant. Then it's straightforward to perform a cofactor expansion along the first column. The cofactor expansion gives us negative one, but we also have to multiply by negative one to the power of the row number plus the column number. This is row two and column three, so that's negative one to the two plus one. Then we multiply this by the determinant of the submatrix that remains when we delete that row and column, so the determinant seen there. Negative one to the three times negative one will just cancel out, and so we just need to evaluate this two by two determinant. That's going to be 10 times negative 43 seen there minus 13 times 22. So finally, the determinant is 144. So this is 144. Let's come back up to matrix A. I forgot to put that determinant. That's negative 55, just writing that down. All right, moving on to A2. The matrix A2 is just the coefficient matrix A, but with the second column replaced by the constants from the right side of the system of equations. To evaluate this determinant, let's just use a cofactor expansion. With 3x3 three three matrices, it's really not that difficult to just use a cofactor expansion from the beginning, because in the end, you just end up with some 2x2 two two determinants. That's not so bad. So performing the cofactor expansion along the first row, we have 1 multiplied by the determinant of that submatrix, and then we subtract 6 multiplied by the determinant of that submatrix, and then we add 1 multiplied by the determinant of that submatrix. Running the numbers, this is 3 minus negative 40, so 3 plus 40, minus 6 times negative 12 minus 4, plus 1 times negative 80 minus negative 2, so negative 80 plus 2. Doing the math, this equals 61. So that's the determinant of the matrix A2. One more determinant to go. Here is the matrix A3. It's the coefficient matrix, but with the third column replaced by the constants from the right side of our system of equations. To find the determinant of this matrix, let's try using the diagonal trick just to mix it up. So to do this, we write our matrix and then rewrite the first two columns on the right side of the matrix. Then we multiply along these rightward diagonals and add up those products. So that's going to be one times negative one times negative 20, which is 20, and then negative four times negative one times two, which is eight, so plus eight, and then six times four times two, so plus 48. Then we subtract products along these leftwards diagonals. So let's run the numbers. Six times negative one times two, so that's going to be negative 12. We are subtracting all of these, so subtract negative 12. Then the next one, one times negative one times two, that's going to be negative two, so minus two. Notice I'm just subtracting this whole thing, and I'm going to put those leftward diagonals in parentheses. And then we have negative four times four times negative 20, so that will be positive 320, so plus 320, and all of these leftward diagonals are being subtracted. Running the numbers on this, this is negative 220. 30 once you do the arithmetic. So we have completed all of the work we need to do as far as determinants go. There are the calculations are. So let's collect this information and use Kramer's rule to find the solution. Here are all the determinants we calculated and here's the solution based on Kramer's rule. We have 144, the determinant of A1, divided by the determinant of the coefficient matrix. That's the value of x and we can just put that negative outside of the fraction. And then for y, we take the determinant of a2 and divide by the determinant of the coefficient matrix, and again, just take that negative outside the fraction. 
And then for z, we take the determinant of a3 and divide by the determinant of the coefficient matrix. These negatives cancel out, and 230 over 55 can be reduced to 46 over 11. And that's the solution of the system. Since these are linear equations in three variables, this describes a system of three planes that all intersect at a single point. And that single point is the one that we just found. So that's how to use Kramer's rule to solve a system of linear equations. As you can see, it takes quite a bit of work, but it works. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And if you find my linear algebra videos helpful, please consider joining Wrath of Math as a channel member to help support what I do and to get early and exclusive access to certain videos, as well as access to my lecture notes that are used in the lessons. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments The union in together like any time that we intersect Cause my opponents know they need